Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting tigers. Tiger lilies, that is. Stick with me. Hello my friends, welcome to another zombie preparedness. Today we're looking at tiger lilies, the day lily. A nice edible food and uh, we're out here at my brother's house. He's graciously allowed me to come out and do his tiger lilies in today. Um, got a lot of useful edible parts to these plants. Um, the, the flowers in particular are edible. They got a little bit of crispiness to them. Just a little bit of sweetness. And they've got an edible rhizome as well. We're going to try and unearth some of that. And uh, we'll take some of these back to the lab with us today and see what we can do with them there. Maybe I'm going to uh, help myself to some of my brother's produce. So our tiger lilies are pretty common on the east coast here, especially in Delaware. We have, a, have them scattered all throughout, mostly on roadsides. But sometimes you get some nice beds like my brother's here. Um, Rockford Park in Wilmington has some really fantastic um, large day lily beds there. We're going to see these uh, almost sedge-like leaves and we got the blossoms coming up. We've got the blossoms coming out here. This one is getting ready to open and these are young blossoms getting ready. So the parts of the tiger lily that are edible are the flower. Unopened flowers are edible. The shoots, but you got to get them in the early spring. The, uh, the American honeybee there. And uh, the roots, or at least the rhizomes and the tubers. Um, rhizomes not so much as the tubers. Of course, of course uh, tiger lilies are all clones. The flower has all the parts. We have six stamens. One, two, three, four, five, six stamens. Nice long pistil coming out here. But it's a sterile flower. Day lilies all propagate by way of their rhizome. So it's a creep. It's creeping under the ground. Now, the flower itself has got six tepals. That's right, tepals, not petals, tepals. Because this is composed of three sepals and three petals. Um, let's look further along. There's my brother's blueberry bush, one of them. Oh look, a little blueberry. Nice little blueberry getting ripe there. Yeah, he's got a more domesticated variety here. This is a, a smaller plant you can see, but it's got the yellow lilies. Those are edible too. And then we've got a different kind of lily. Notice this has alternate leaves. It doesn't have the sedge-like leaves. And I don't know if this type is edible or not. So we're going to have to uh, do a little research and see if that one is. Alright, so I've dug down on, this, on one side of this plant here and I've exposed some roots looks like the plant is growing off 
back towards the rest of the bed but I'm not seeing any rhizomes yet so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig around to the other side a little bit more and see if I can find any rhizomes now this plant its roots are approximately four inches down there they go down to about six or eight inches but we will uh, explore a little bit further and see if we can find any of the rhizomes. While we're here, let's look at the base of the plant. We can see how it's got a kind of a triangular section and it's coming out from the basal rosette and many leaves within leaves within leaves. Well, there's our central stalk. One, two leaves, three leaves out from the central stalk. And we've got another cluster over here with more leaves out there. I don't see another stalk coming up. I think it's only one stalk per plant. Okay, so we've unearthed a few of the rhizomes here. They're not very big. There's a larger one over here. And you can see it, this one is just kind of puffing out in the root. So, they're rather small and I don't want to dig up his whole bed of daylilies here. So we're just going to harvest this, these two plants whose roots I've exposed here. That will injure, injure those plants having the roots exposed like this. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest them. So I've gone ahead and washed the dirt away from the roots so we can see the way these rhizomes form better. Got a number of them. You can see the regular root and then it starts filling out the rhizome. That one got cut with my trowel as I was digging up. But we got a number of rhizomes on the plant. But that's the root structure of our daylily. So I've got the oil up to about 212 degrees. We can tell that in the field by putting a little bit of water in there as the oil's heating up and it'll boil out pleasantly. do it as the oil is heating up or you get all that splatter coming up all over the place. So that's about uh, oh, maybe a quarter inch of olive oil in there and uh, yeah this is another first time for Z-Man so I don't know exactly how to do this so we're going to try it a couple of different ways. I'm going to take the entire blossom notice that it's closed up a little bit since picking and I'm just going to bloop that into the batter. Let it drain just a little bit. That looks pleasant. And into the fat. Oil. Fat. That was pretty neat. Now let's take some sepals and some petals and do them kind of individually. Neat shot of the gender parts. Looks like that ovary is that minor term. I gotta go find out what that is. How simple could that be? Superior and inferior. That looks rather pretty. And a nice fragrance too.
do a single sepal petal. I don't know which it is now. A couple of them. They cook pretty fast. Oh, right. And a uh, uh, unopened flower. Well, this one opened a little bit, but it's essentially unopened. And try that too. And they're supposed to be able to be done like they're supposed to be able to be done like vegetables, kind of like asparagus. So some other time I'm gonna have to try that out and just steam the unopened flowers. I just love the pretty color on this cattail batter. I mean, you just don't get a golden brown like that off of regular flour. We always talk about golden brown, but this is golden brown. Alrighty, so, while we were cooking our daylily, we've got our daylily tubers here. We're going to get some of these wrapped up in a foil packet. look a little dirty that's because they are a little dirty so I'm going to have to get them a little wash up now remember like I said brown ones are last year's but they look pretty good so I'm going to give them a try I'm going to cut the cross section they're white and starchy like a uh, like a potato so it's supposed to be these white ones that are this year's and it may just be the time of year that I got out there but these the uh, white ones that are this year's growth are not so wonderful. That one's just ugly. I'm not going to keep that. You know, this one's kind of ugly too. Bye bye. to cook the white ones separate from the brown ones so that I can try and get a see if there's a taste textural qualitative difference this part, not the root-like part. We want where the starches are kept, not where the woodiness is. Like 
that one, I don't like that one. Maybe I like this one. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I harvested the roots, I didn't get to them quickly. And so, they dried out miserably. And uh, this time, I still couldn't get to them quickly enough, but I had the forethought to put them in the refrigerator. So just keep in mind that if you can't get to your daylily Tiger Lily root harvest in a timely fashion, you need to consider not letting them dehydrate badly. Yeah, that one's no good. Perhaps in the autumn, which is another recommendation, this is June harvesting these when the flowers are in bloom. Sources recommend that these be harvested in the autumn. Maybe they're bigger, but I doubt it. If these are supposed to be last year's, this is about as big as they get. I saw one other YouTuber harvest these and his were his looked a little bit larger there's the rhizome root and that's how it propagates itself all these little tubers are energy storage like potatoes, which are also tubers. We're going to cook these like, like that. I don't know if this one counts as white or brown. I think it counts as brown. Considering what you have to go through to get to the tubers, it seems like a shame to only go for white ones, considering you have to dig up the entire plant to get to them. So once upon a time, C 
man lived in Texas. Went down to Texas for love. Beautiful red-haired girl. Moved from a nice well-paying job out here on the East Coast out to Texas, the land of adventure and big hats. I guess I still like the big hats, huh? Anyway, went on out for love and I guess she didn't like that Z-Man wasn't a wealthy man down there in 24 Unemploymentville. 24 percent Unemploymentville. I think I've got most everything out of that root mass. Anyway, she kicked me out on my ear and that was all she wrote. So anyway, there I was in Texas and my poor truck had had major problems with its clutch. 24% unemployment and not, not a whole lot of money to my name. So I ended up living in the state parks. It was actually not a bad time. Texas is a wonderful place to be if you've got to stay outside. Even in the summer when temperatures are jumping up above 112 in the forested park it was actually kind of nice. So while I was there I developed a recipe that I called Boucher Potatoes named after Boucher State Park. Bunch of ugly ones on this one. So, once I get these daylily tubers all processed, cut and washed, I'll carry on with my Boucher potato recipe. All processed there and looking pretty. And we're going to get on to the rest of the Boucher potatoes recipe. I don't need all of this onion for the, all of this. Yeah, maybe I do, maybe I do. Those are for the stock pot. Oh! Done with that one. Every good prepper has a backup. And I want two of these. I'm going to go shiny side in. up one half of the onion. Normally I use big dices for Boucher potatoes because I get big pieces of potatoes. So I'm going to use very small dices in this case because uh, the 
play with big lilies. Uh, small pieces. That's about a small potato, don't you think? Yeah. Diced onion. Boucher potatoes get garlic. And we need some turmeric. Let's go to turmeric. There's turmeric. Turmeric is a nice pepper, a very light pepper flavor. It's in chili powder. But more than anything, it puts golden color in your food. We want some basil. And red pepper. Red pepper. We all like red pepper. Ooh. Some of have been using up the red pepper and not been saying anything about it getting gone. That's probably enough anyway. Also for color and just a little bit of flavor, some paprika. Paprika. Now, The dish was empty. So we're going to get into this package here. We're going to do two tablespoons of butter. Uh oh, my Texas is coming out. Two tablespoons of butter. We're just going to put them up in little pats like this because we want them to melt and distribute quickly in the package. edges and make a foil pouch seal. in there we're going to put one two tablespoons of water water Lots of people say water differently. I do not say it in the Delaware fashion. I say it in the Harrisburg Muncie fashion. Water. And we're going to put that in the oven for a good time. Alright, I'm going to do another little package here for the white tubers and we'll be back at the table alrighty friends we have quite the supper here tonight we've got croakers stuffed with nettles and we've got daylily fried daylily flowers battered in cattail batter cattail pollen batter and here we've got the white tubers from the day lily. And this yellow matter here is chopped up, dr chopped up, dried, and rehydrated day lily blossoms. 
And then over here we have the brown daylily tubers. And for dessert we have cattail pancakes with uh, honey and sugar. So we have the full flour battered and fried. And that's pretty tasty. The, uh, I think I'm tasting more of the cattail pollen batter than I am the tiger lily. Um, let's see, I buried it somewhere in here. This is the closed flower. And that's about the same. Oh, that wasn't the closed flower. This is the closed flower. Hmm. Pleasant. Still a whole lot of cattail pollen batter flavor, which is quite yummy. But the uh, when it comes out, you're sure going to want to watch the cattail video. It's a nice long one, though. Um, I can, it, the closed flower one is more dense and I can actually taste the tiger lily blossom in there. Very mild. Compared to the single petal, petal I get almost no day lily flower. And the um, open flower. Hmm. When I get down here towards the ovary and the peduncle, that's when I get a little bit more of the flower, flavor of the flower. You can eat the petals raw. I think I mentioned that already. So here we have the brownish tubers, cooked boucher potato style. And you know what? <laughs> it tastes just like boucher potatoes. Which is a pretty seasoned dish, but you can definitely get a potato-like flavor out of this. Now the first year tubers look a lot like pearl onions. And they taste a little bit like pearl onions, which is not remarkable because daylilies are related to onions. They're both in the... Uh, all right, yeah, I'm not a Latin speaker, folks. Um, when I do speak Latin, I have to go over to the Internet. <coughs> Excuse me. I have to go over to the Internet and get... A pronunciation guide. Latin is not my thing. But um, onions and tiger lilies belong to the same same family as asparagus. I, I think I'm right on that because it's asparagium. All right, I'll get it up there on the, on the screen in text. So it's not amazing that there's some onion flavor here. Not to mention there's onions in the mix. Soft, uh, soft like steamed onions or roasted onions. Very pleasant texture. And uh, I'm imagining that it has the same kind of food value as onions do. Um, Sadly, I don't have any nutritional information about any of the parts of the daylily. Um, I should mention the 
the young shoots of the tiger lily are also supposed to taste like onion. So, um, what else do we need to talk about? Um, ah, we need to talk about the immense variety of daylilies now. Use caution when you're going out there. The fulva species and the small yellow species, I'll get that one's name up in text for you. Those are, I know, are edible. There are a number of Asiatic and French and who knows, uh, varieties of daylilies <coughs> that don't look, their, their stem and their leaves don't look anything like the tiger lily. The flower, though, is remarkably the same and even tastes the same. Um, I did not swallow that, that petal. I only tasted it to see if there was some similarity, which is a risky thing to do. You don't want to go out there and even taste things that you don't know what they are. Have somebody that you know and trust take you out in the field and show you what is actually edible. Um, Green Dean over on Eat the Weeds, he talks about a fellow named Dick Durley. I want you to go, your homework tonight is to go visit eatthewedes.com and read up on what Green Dean has to say about Dick Durling's test for food safety. All right, that's your homework. Do it now. Um, so be careful of the immense variety of daylilies. Make sure you've got the orange with black spots or orange with which might be woodland woodland daylily um, black stripe um, not very pronounced there so uh, you know, make sure what you have the yellow ones are very low growing smaller flowers um, and uh, but taste exactly the same I don't know if their tubers are smaller, commensurate with their smaller leaves and smaller flowers. Uh, perhaps. Uh, I, I haven't dug any up there. All the yellow ones in the area are definitely ornamental. Um, incidentally, it's getting harder to find tiger lilies in an open place. Almost all the tiger lilies I came across on this adventure were ornamental flowers that were growing at people's houses usually at the end of their driveway but still their home so yeah hard to find any to forage um, oh, that brings me up to one final idea and that is the <clears throat> the uh, sterile lawn syndrome sterile lawn syndrome is my is a, a thing that I've made up here a term that I've made up to describe the crazy um, the, the, the crazy attitude that people have towards lawns that are just perfect little patches of grass Oh, you got some red fescue, you got some Kentucky blue, you got some other fescue, maybe you got some Timothy in there if you're really lucky, but you know, that's it. And you can't eat it because it's mown down to where the point where you don't even have seed heads. Here we are in Newcastle County where the, where the land use department has sterile lawn syndrome. You can't let anything grow above eight inches. That puts out that that puts off so much wild food that could be growing in your yard. You can't have you you can't have weeds. <laughs> there goes another whole bunch of sterile food, uh, uh, sterile a whole bunch of wild foods. Make your lawn sterile so that everybody can look the same and say, "Oh, how picturesque!" And yet, what's really picturesque? is a beautiful field full of food ready for you to go out and forage. So, help combat sterile, sterile lawn syndrome. Grow some weeds. 
and eat them. <laughs> Folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing this interest in day lilies with me. Tiger lilies are very yummy. <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, send me some comments. Let me know if you have any questions about daylilies. Did I really cover the topic well? Okay. Thanks for your subscriptions, folks. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your donations. I, I don't have a donate button, but pretend like you want to, and that'll be fun. Okay. Remember, kids? The knowledge that you carry in your head, it weighs nothing, and it takes up no room in your bag. See you next time.